Hi, good evening. Time to have a little look at the infotainment system on the e Nero 4, uh, which launched recently in the UK. I picked up one of the first ones on Monday. Uh, you might have seen my earlier video about the Uvo app. Uh, now we're going to take a look at um, the in-car infotainment. So um, I believe the binnacles changed slightly. Uh, the centre displays changed ever so slightly. Um, don't know all the details about that. So um, and I think most people are interested in what's in the middle. So let's come over here. Let's just get the white balance right and lock on that. Okay, so um, huge, huge screen. Uh, it's probably well at least at least fifty percent wider than uh, the first edition one. Uh, although I've not seen that um, apart from a test drive in April. So, um, but uh, from videos I've seen online way way bigger than the first edition um, and the key sort of differentiator apart from the size of the screen is that uh, the e Nero 4 has also got live connectivity so you'll see in the top right hand corner that if I just lock into that side you'll see live and the Uvo indicator up there um, so that is showing the signal strength for the onboard sim um, which provides all your remote connectivity, uh, live traffic updates and so on and uh, and when that live is visible uh, then you know your car has got mobile coverage and is connected and so on. Um, so let's just pan out a little bit. Um, there we go. Um, where should we start? So we've got three, three widgets up here you can customise uh, so you can edit your home widgets, dr drag and drop which ones you want them to be in here, so you just pick them up there, drag them across. Um, got weather, let's see, I'll quick prove it, what widgets there are, says climate, weather, map, clock, and we've got on the right hand side here, driving info, radio media, and electric vehicle. And you can swap those around as however you want. Um, okay, so Trip information just basically shows you your current trip info, and uh, because I've not started the vehicle, it's not going to let me show anything there. Um, radio, fairly self-explanatory. On the left-hand side, you've got your favourite stations, and you can easily add one in there. Uh, the right-hand side here, it shows the uh, station info and things like artist track lists and so on. Uh, you can also, I believe, on the right-hand side here, you can always pull out this drawer on the right hand side which gives you a sort of a split screen showing your battery percentage and range which is basically what you see in the binnacle here but maybe it's for the benefit of your passengers or so on or something like that um, and you can also search for stations so right now I can search for charging station near us and um, actually the closest one is Long Ashton Park and Ride um, just outside Bristol and then in there you can see, uh, well you can, you can favourite a station, you can look at your current, near your current position, your destination, uh, or just filter by your favourites, and you can also do it by distance, or you can do it by name, but all these are, um, I don't know, not sure if they're showing their live availability, uh, let's have a quick look, I know, Long Ashton 1, yeah, it's got a contact number for it. Uh, don't think it shows. Okay, so quite quite a lot of information here. So connector types, charge level, and don't believe it shows whether they're in use right now. Um, but uh, at the very least, you've got you know, easy to find stations near you. And obviously you can use something like ZapMap to figure out actual availability of them. Uh, so let's go back. Uh, is there anything else we can show here? So you can you can route route to a station. Um, you can add it as a, a waypoint on the way to your destination, uh, so you're not messing up your uh, your sort of pre-programmed um, journey that you're on. Um, and yeah, so that's the sort of the battery sort of split screen you can get, activate there. Uh, what else can we do? We can also go through and find. The comprehensive list of all stations, um, and uh, and so on, and yes, DAB FM. I think 
it's also got AM, but uh, yeah, band, oh yeah, so DAB, FM, and AM. Let's go back. Okay, so that's uh, radio. Um, we've, we've gone through this one on the right-hand side here. Uh, let's just see, if I move that across, if I move that one across to there, and go back, and I go into this one, yeah, so that, that right hand widget is always battery and range. Uh, so uh, the electric vehicle widget, what does this show us? So we've got on the left hand side here, we've got uh, charge management. So um, expected tar charge time, so I'm charging right now. We're saying it's going to be fully charged by 11 o'clock. And um, my next departure is programmed to be, well, I said 9.20. I was just messing around with it before I got in. Um, Saying 4.2 miles to the nearest um, charging station. It's ridiculously zoomed out on that map right now. And if I, I'm just trying to zoom in, but that's not working for that. Let's try to change the DAB station. Um, on the right hand side here, you can see the charging limits you've got set. You can simply go in and change those. Where are we? Um, so it's charging on AC, current range 254. Battery 89% uh, tells you an estimate of when the charging will be complete. Uh, press the battery to view the energy consumption screen. Again, you can't do that until you're actually in motion. Um, AC charger. So here's where you can set your charging limit. You can also do this through the, through the UVO app. Um, so on AC charging, you can say, okay, I, I never want it to go above 80 or 90, and you can just adjust that as well, however you want. Uh, where else have we got here? So. Um, charge management, so you can set your next departure, charging schedule, uh, whether you want to set a target temperature. Um, now this target temperature only works if you're plugged in. So while you can turn on the, um, uh, the AC remotely via, via the app, you can't schedule it to come on unless it's plugged in. So um, uh, if you, if say for example, if you've left, you're leaving work and you're not charging at work, you can't schedule it to heat up. You would have to heat it up five minutes before you, you set off for the, to, to go to your car. Um, so, let's have a go. so charging and climate, I think charging location here, you can, you can set the place where you want to charge only. Um, again, charging limits, 100%, 100% for DC and AC. Uh, so for example, like if you, if you only, need say 50% on the DC charger you've stopped at a service station somewhere and um, you don't know how long it's going to take you to get and get lunch and so on you could just set that to 50% if that's all you want to spend um, and then uh, it won't go beyond that uh, charging current you can you can set a maximum charging current as well so um, I'm not sure why you would necessarily want to do that but um, it would obviously lead to longer charging times again AC you can uh, you can use a lower charge if you wish. Say for example, if it's a I don't know a particularly expensive charger, you only you only need to leave it for an hour, but you only need a certain amount of charge. You could reduce the uh, the current. Uh, so charge management. I think that's everything in here. Let's go back. Eco driving. Um, this will tell you how much carbon dioxide you've reduced through your driving compared to a petrol engine engine petrol engine vehicle of a comparable size. Uh, fuel economy history, so um, journeys that we've done, well, that, that 13, 13th of February was, uh, I think, before it left Korea, so that's the delivery mileage it came with, and then we've got uh, journeys that are done since then, um, and these driving, I think these are collated by sort of time of day, so if you did like several journeys back to back in the morning or in the evening, they would be collated like 2nd of March is when I picked up the car, drove home, and then took the kids for a quick drive when we got back. Uh, so those are collated together, whereas my morning trip and my evening trip um, yesterday are coming out separately. Um, so uh, what else have we got back here? So uh, so that's the electric vehicle view. If you go into here, this will show you your range. Um, maybe that's why it's so zoomed out because that's how far this car can go, which is pretty awesome. Um, C notwithstanding, it says you can at least get up to 
pretty much the border of Scotland from uh, from here just south of Bristol, which um, is pretty phenomenal. Um, and uh, what else have we got here? List. Okay, that's taking you back to the list of charging stations again. Um, so I think that's everything. Yeah, I think that's covered everything covered in the electric vehicle panel. Uh, then, so apart from these widgets here, obviously you said you've got other ones here, so let's have a quick look at what weather looks like. Let's drag that in and set a driving info. And let's, I'm not going to show you map because I don't really want to show you where I live. Uh, climate, drop that in there. And we're done driving info. Let's have a quick look at what the clock looks like and see if we can change on that. Okay, let's go back. So uh, this tells you your weather and the destination. So I'd set a destination earlier on saying I'm going to Folkestone, just as a to the Euro tunnel down there. Um, updated 958, so right now it's currently raining in Folkestone. Tomorrow it's raining. Typical British um, winter right now. We've had a lot of rain over the last few months. Um, outside temperature is six degrees where we are now, and you can it tells you what, what whether your climate control is on or off. I've got it off right now, so we're not hearing lots of noise. And then right hand side here, clock. Uh, you can change it into 24 hour format if you wish. Um, it's used, set using GPS time, so in theory, you'd never need to worry about that apart from obviously your daylight savings. Uh, language you can set keyboard screensaver. I didn't realize that was up there. Um, yeah, so you can, I think you can set a screensaver which has an analog clock in it or a digital clock. It's quite cool when the screen's powered power off, digital clock and display displayed. Um, system info, now you can see the version info. Interesting. Update, even better. That implies that it can do over the air software updates. As you can tell, I haven't actually spent too much time looking through these yet, so um, you're learning this as I, as I learn it. Um, what else we've got here? So, system info, version info, memory, presumably, yeah, voice memos. You've got 128 megabytes you can save a voice memos. So come to that in a sec. Um, you can access the manual on your phone. So, QR code there, download the manual. It's a bit easier than trying to navigate this. And presumably, you can set all your default, all your settings back to default if you so wish. Um, yeah, so the, the over there, if, over the air. Uh, Update info is, is quite interesting because I know that the dealer at my uh, dealership that I got the car from on Monday, Tom, um, he seemed to think that the SIM had 30 gig of data a month, which seems like a hell of a lot when you can't actually use the data, like you can't hotspot to anything in the, in your car for, and so on. Uh, so it's literally just like the infotainment system uses the data and obviously the car for any remote management and so on. Um, but... Um, but yeah, it looks like some of this firmware at the very least is over the air updatable, which is great. So you don't have to go back to um, your dealer to get maps updates, software updates, um, navigation, and so on. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, what else we got here? So we've done screensaver, keyboard, language, date, times, anything else under here? Nope. Um, but yeah, interesting. So that's uh, hidden away under the clock menu. Might, might, might not particularly discoverable. Um, okay, so I think we've done most of the widgets now, apart from the map one. But um, yeah, basically you can you can split you you can have this sort of split screen mode on the front of the of the uh, infotainment display as you're going along, or if you swipe to the right, you can dig down into individual apps. So um, uh, let's say. I don't particularly want to go into navigation and maps now. Now I've got a, another video that my daughter took earlier of us navigating, so I'll uh, splice that in in a sec.
sec. Uh, but we've got um, here, so media, you can um, download media because I've got my CarPlay connected. It's jumped straight into whatever media was playing last. And so, um, fortunately, this music is from a friend of mine who owns copyrights for music, and I'm not going to get kicked off of YouTube. Um, her name's Louise Golby. I used to go to school with her back in Bournemouth, back in 20 odd years ago. Um, she's a singer-songwriter from London, and um, yeah, she's uh, she's brilliant. So um, let's just have a listen to the sound of her first of all. So you probably can't pick this up on the phone camera that I'm uh, recording this on, but the speakers are absolutely awesome in this car. Best best um, stereo I've ever had in a car. Um, and I'm going to keep Louise playing in the background while we uh, have a quick look at CarPlay. A lot of you have probably had CarPlay in a, in a, in a car before. Um, this is only our second one. My, uh, my wife, we picked up a MGZ SEV about uh, six weeks ago. Um, that's the first car we've ever had CarPlay in. Love it, uh, but on the, on the MG it is a much smaller screen, so I'd say it's probably around about that wide, so from sort of two thirds of the width. Um, so this extra screen, real estate, is great, spaces it all out a bit more. However, you can't do any kind of split screen stuff in CarPlay. CarPlay is like whatever app you've got in the foreground takes over the entire app. Uh, the only exception to that is, uh, where are we? If you come to the, the main screen here, and it shows you your location on the right, which I'm going to have to redact after the, in the edit room afterwards. Um, music on the left-hand side here, and uh, you can navigate to home or uh, things like that. So, um, and you've got like, you see you've got Do Not Disturb and Signal Indicators on the top right-hand side there. And your three most recent apps are shown on the right-hand side here. So phone, um, music, Google Maps, and so on. So uh, let me... Come in here, obviously you can view podcasts as well. So you can go and get your fix of Robert Llewellyn if you want. I'm fully charged. Thanks Robert for everything. If you if you happen to be watching this, I very much doubt you are. Um, but uh, yeah, so you can watch your uh, podcast in here. You've got your library, you can browse for podcasts. You can obviously download them, but that would be using your uh, mobile phones data not your onboard sim data uh, because uh, that's just the way it is um, so podcasts um, let's go into uh, we've got obviously Apple Maps I'll, uh, I'll come back to Maps in a second uh, settings do not disturb while, while driving album art suggestions for Siri appearance um, Siri obviously can be activated via both um, person holding the button here. I probably can't see it just about. If I can focus on it. There we go. So if I press on that. Please say a command. That kicks into the onboard nav. Now that varies. Sometimes it's activated Siri for me. Sometimes it's activating uh, the onboard. Um, uh, uh, voice recognition so um, yeah I need to have a little bit more study of the manual Sorry. to understand how that works uh, let's come back out of there uh, what else we got I think that's it oh one important setting for CarPlay which isn't actually in CarPlay is um, 
in the Kia menu. Sorry. So to go back to sort of the, the Kia infotainment system, you have to press on Kia. That takes you back to here. And then there is settings, phone connection. Focus a little bit for you. Uh, so for CarPlay, settings cannot be changed while the phone projection is connected via USB. Fine, I'll unplug it briefly. CarPlay. So enable CarPlay, and you also have this option of, is this a left-hand drive car or is it a right-hand drive car? Now obviously, the um, uh, majority of Kia's markets are left-hand drive, so it comes pre-configured like this. And what that means, if I plug it back in again, Bear with me. But now if I went back into CarPlay, which I've actually, um, you can you can customize this star button to do a particular task. So you can press that and I've programmed that to take me back into CarPlay. And you notice now um, all these, your recent apps are on the left-hand side rather than the right-hand side, which obviously is a bit more of a stretch for a, a right-handed drive vehicle. So. Um, you'll probably want to flip that over to the right-hand drive if you're on a UK model. Otherwise, in, in Europe, you'll be fine as you are. Uh, let's go back and get the focus back a little bit. Um, so yeah, any any app which is um, navigation-based or audio-based, i.e. doesn't need any um, sort of tapping interaction, they can, in theory, have a, a CarPlay app. Um, not many apps support this, um, and you can't just that the primary purpose of the app has to be um, audio or navigational. So although it would be great if you could have ZapMap on here or if you could have um, a better route planner or things like that, uh, those apps could never, under the current Apple rules, could never have a CarPlay app because they are primarily sort of browsing apps where you're looking for something, points of information and stuff. You're, you're not allowed to uh, have CarPlay apps for that, unfortunately, under Apple's current... Uh, developer guidelines and so because you know, of because it's a curated store they won't let anything else in um, so you've got um, yeah now playing Kia phone music maps um, I'm sure there's way better videos than this on on YouTube if you want to figure out you know, an overview of CarPlay but uh, obviously the screen here is fantastic on on the Kia so uh, and you can even use it for, so if you've got Zoom, if you use Zoom for video conferencing, um, or sorry, for audio conferencing, you can use that in here as well. So um, obviously if it uses your mobile data, probably going to be a bit unreliable, but um, Overcast is a podcasting app, so that's appearing in here. Spotify, Waze, um, WhatsApp, so WhatsApp um, works very similarly to messages in that you, it can read uh, messages out to you via Siri and you can dictate messages back via Siri um, so um, those are really the only sort of th three categories I should say uh, so music navigation um, and uh, and messaging that's controlled solely by Siri um, so I think that's all for CarPlay let's uh, let's come out of here now and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a little pause and I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you some of the map stuff. Okay, um, Google Maps, satellite map overlay, incredibly crisp. Um, so how far can we zoom in on this? Euro tunnel at Folkestone. Um, obviously, even as close as you get, a little bit it gets a little bit pixelated, but as you can see, um, it looks absolutely amazing and um, really it's ridiculously big. Um, zoom all the way out, you can pan around, you can go into London. Right. Everyone everyone knows what uh, Google Maps satellite looks like, but um, yeah, you can, I'm not sure if you can actually tap around, I think this is just for, this is just for sort of panning around the map basically. Um, but uh, yeah, really fantastic. Here's an example how um, route, map routing looks, so you, once you've picked a destination you can see through your options, timings, so 24 minutes, 28 minutes and so on. Uh, you can press go, overview again and um, really good. Let's just change this back to night mode. So um, let's change that back a bit clearer. Um, so yeah, I think 
you know, most people are pretty familiar with Google Maps. Um, if you're a Waze user or Apple Maps user, likewise, you can use those as well. Um, what else can we show here? Yeah, so you can got like speed camera info and stuff. And I think you can even, yeah, you can turn on traffic, set your route options, avoid motorways, tolls, ferries, um, adjust the volume. You can, you can also do that through. You can uh, change navigation volume with your car's controls, but only when navigation is speaking. So there we go. You can change navigation. Um, and I think that's probably it. Yeah, you can set. You can if you prefer, if you want night mode the whole time. If you want dark mode in your uh, in uh, the navigation, you can select that, or vice versa. You can set day navigation during the night time, or you can do it automatically based on time of day. Um, I think to select that. Okay, so let's come out of Google Maps a second. So uh, back to the Kia app. So on the left hand side here you've got media. Um, if you've got your phone connected via CarPlay or Android Auto, that basically just takes you into um, Android Auto or CarPlay. If you haven't got it connected via uh, a cable and you've just got it connected over Bluetooth, then media takes you into um, various things like uh, well basically anything you can play over audio via Bluetooth so whether it's um, a podcast whether it's music and so on so you don't necessarily have to have a cable in order to play your favorite music as you're driving along um, it can also I believe it can also look at messages and so on as well but uh, I haven't got that sorted out yet um, so and you can have I presume multiple different Bluetooth devices so for example if both you and your wife had a, a Bluetooth phone. I think that would appear here, and you can decide who's who's one you would want to display there. So yeah, you can, and that's the settings for it. Okay, so um, let's go back. Uh, media, USB video um, allows you to play um, MP4 videos um, if you've connected a USB stick somewhere. Um, the EV uh, app on here, we showed you that. That's basically the widget, voice memos is, as you can guess, just a, a voice memo recording thing. Then we've got um, the main thing I think most people will be interested in are the Uvo features. So, um, a number of video I shared this morning um, of, the, uh, of the Uvo app, you saw us sending um, points of information to the vehicle. Um, so you can just say, yep, yeah, I want to pick one of these and it will basically launch into the navigation with the with that pre-selected as the destination um, it would show my current location right now as the start of that journey so I'm not going to show you that right now but um, uh, that works really well then um, vehicle diagnostics um, to start the vehicle let me just start it quickly again I think it's just gone to uh, unplug the vehicle to start because I'm charging I can't do that right now um, but basically, it doesn't show you much, it just says everything's fine, or if there's a problem, presumably, it would tell you what the problem is. Um, very similar to the kind of diagnostics you can do remotely via the Uvo app, um, so that will tell you whether your tyre pressures are low, or if um, you know there's other problems it's detected, there's about 10 different things it checks. Uh, right hand side here, Uvo settings, that's things like uh, whether you're all connected up with uh, the Uvo app and the Kia Live. So what, what things you're sharing and so on with, um, with them from a privacy point of view. Uh, then let's go into Kia Live. So this is sort of the, the main things you would probably be using on a, on a sort of more day-to-day -day basis of the over-the-air stuff. So we've got things like the weather. So weather at destination, you can set favorite, favorite locations um, and your, you can show your current position. Uh, so that basically will dictate what gets displayed on the uh, on the widget if you have that on your home screen then um, live POI so point of information um, this would in theory allow you to choose somewhere like uh, let's say Ashton Gate let's see if this works tour station Ashton Gate, Ashton Gate Stadium and so on so you can basically using it for looking up places without having to go through the navigation um, thing. So you can 
uh, I guess add this, you can start guidance to it, add tour points, blah blah blah. Um, then, where are we? Life parking, tell your nearby parking locations. Uh, so, uh, yeah, how, how far it is to them, what the price are is on the right hand side. Uh, probably doesn't tell you whether they're full or not, or maybe they, maybe they would. I don't know. But um, yeah, Bristol Airport, ten pound a minute. Don't go there, um, unless you're picking someone up in like one minute flat. Uh, so yeah, you can say near a current position, near a destination, near a city centre, um, and you can do it by price or distance. Um, type on the street, off street. So yeah, lots of um, parking options for you there. I'm guessing that's going to show a map of all of them nearby. But uh, yeah, nearest. I think it defaults to near current position. Uh, where are we? Let's go back. So that's live parking, live charging stations. This is basically similar to what we saw earlier. So you can see your uh, our nearest one to here allegedly is Bristol Airport. There's actually one at the Pelly. Um, in Chew Magna now, but that's a fairly recent addition, so um, it's not showing up there. But yeah, you can see like all the all the current uh, availability. And oh, that's interesting. Polar here is showing a green icon against it. I don't know if you can tell that, but that's green. That's white. So let's see what information we can see about that. Can we see any more info? Nope. Okay, here we go. Uh, so this has got ACDC. Yeah, this is just taking you through different ones. So yeah, that polar. I get. Well, maybe it's because it's um, maybe it's because it's a DC one. Maybe that's why it's showing up as green. I oh, know that one's an AC. Oh yeah. So yeah, that looks like polar are sharing um, status because that one's green. That one's red, so either that's offline or it's currently in use. Um, other ones doesn't look like they are sharing their data with them right now. Um, so let's go back out of here. And finally, traffic. So um, because I've set a route earlier on to go to Folkestone, it's telling me that uh, there is some traffic along the route at the M32 and at the M4. Pretty standard M32 is always congested even at this time of night. Um, and I think that is a pretty comprehensive overview of things. Uh, so climate we had before. Driving info shows, shows you current driving info. There's various settings and so on so where you can go and change your like, charging limits and so on that we covered earlier. Uh, manual and favourites. Um, I think favourites is for things like you can do like shortcuts to things but not really sure what the benefit of that is when you can see them all from here anyway. Um, but yeah, in settings, you've got vehicle settings, nav settings, data network, advanced general sound, media, display and voice recognition. Um, so uh, there's lots to learn if you do get one of these cars. Um, fundamental thing is though, it's really, really massively clear screen, um, really high def. I, I doubt that this is really doing it justice on here. But um, it's really good, and yeah, you get this status in the top hand corner. For example, now that my, I've disconnected my phone, it's now saying it's connected via Bluetooth. Uh, so you can do like hands free calling and so on with that. And it's also showing that it's connected live. Uh, so let's come out of here. So I think that will do for one night. Um, home widgets, home icons, yeah, I think we're done. So I'm going to call it a night and try and uh, edit this up as quickly as I can. Cheers, everyone.